Um, and I sort of see that being unlikely because of the theory perspective, the kind of distance that is required to get the view of the world at large. And someone like Gandhi may be someone who has mediated that. But I think that there's um, a practical, technical element that we try and shy away from. Maybe it's from postmodernism. But um, just because instrumental reason has been used for bad, um, there are still those using instrumental reason and using practical, technical um, mechanisms to oppress and repress others in this world. And we can look and see that they're doing this, but if we don't also instrumentally act on the opposite pole as a left or as some sort of progressive force, then we're just going to be stuck in the perspective of watching as all of this destruction goes on. So from that sense, um, I think that practical um, measures w um, are something that should probably be incorporated into social theory as, uh, like for example, I've always thought about why not convince everybody to not pay their credit card bills one month and the entire capitalist economy would shut down. Um, that's just one idea, but where would I express that idea and think through all of the ramifications and the other utopic or dystopic scenarios that might come from that idea? So um, that's just my comment, and, and I just think that um, this conference has done a lot um, in terms of outlining pretty well the conditions that we face and the limitations, but um, maybe there's a follow-up conference to be had about outlining something alternative. Um, well, I want to thank um, Steve and Alan and Terry. Um, I, I know how, how much work organizing conferences are. And so it's nice to have a little intellectual stimulus package in the middle of I mean, that's first thing. A lot of work, and I'm sure everybody's gotten a lot out of it. I wish I had been able to do more. more. So, what I want to say, I don't want to be thought of as critical of what is a next step um, in some ways building on what Hans has said and Eric has said uh, and others. And I guess one of the questions that I that I that's been bouncing around but maybe has not been fully articulated is what does it mean for social theory and theorizing that has been dominant in large part because the society from which it springs is dominant. What does it mean when that society is declining? Right? What does it mean for that theory and for that process of theorizing? What do we think of uh, um, Wolfgang brought this up and I, I want to know more about the material that you read. What does it mean, uh, what do we think of issues of expertise, for example, um, especially when expertise has often been a global north process? Um, how do we hear other voices and theories? How can we open to theory from the emergent, maybe theorizing from place in some ways? So we've heard people t mention, just for example, um, Arturo Escobar, we've heard folks talk about the example of Chavez in Venezuela. Uh, I brought up the notion of when we did. These are all ideas that are articulated by um, intellectuals from the global south. And this might be one of those places of hope and change that would be a really good antidote for those of us who are in a society that appears to be declining on one hand in terms of economic measures, but might reinvigorate the notion that maybe the only way, maybe there are many more ways to address um, societal goods than either decline or, decline or, uh, or rising economic goods, right? So if we listen to other folks who have a different perspective on this process, Right? We may be feeling really bad about our decline, and there may be 
a whole series of folks who are not so unhappy. Um, and that may then give us a chance to listen to mm -hmm. them. The, 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 this may give us a, a chance to rethink that perhaps the decline of economic supremacy might provide a whole series of other opportunities. Maybe that's one of the places to go for the next um. <clears throat> Social theory, to some degree, has been wrapped up with the idea of totality. Uh, and I think totalities come on hard times uh, for quite a while. And I think we're living in a new space, uh, the space of globalization, which you're talking about, the space of pluralisms and the multiple types of, of projects dealing with uh, forms of misery uh, and uh, that are reconstructive in some ways. Uh, but I look at my own discipline in sociology, although I'm marginal to what I feel right now in terms of, uh, I, I feel my field is so incredibly fragmented there's no common project. And in fact, as Stephen Turner has been here before, has written very, uh, uh, very brilliantly on the marginalization of social theory in sociology. It becomes a marginal practice, marginalized to academic career and to um, sociological status wars. Worry about the ranking of your department, your place in the discipline. Um, so I want, I want to say there has been, I think there is an issue of fragmentation. I think of reconstituting any kind of totality, we're not going to be talking about the thing that it was before. But Alan talks about the idea of motivation. Motivation toward what? You know, and that's not a, that's not a critique at all. Uh, what kind of telos, what type of end uh, do we have collectively, uh, especially when terms like democracy, socialism, practically every big term that you can use uh, that would refer to a kind of world that facilitates those pluralistic projects, the type of reformism, and I find among my undergraduate students, especially the people that are really engaged. Well, let, let me say, I find many more really engaged people. And kids that are at 19 or 20 or, are, are, are doing um, uh, spring breaks, uh, where they're doing social things, where they're not immediately aiming to, in fact, a lot of the very best students, instead of going on to Harvard, or Princeton, uh, the law school or professional schools are applying for uh, uh, a variety of different kinds of uh, programs to get their, their hands wet in, in social change. And I'm wondering, in, in social theory, I think that somehow the big discourse is still important. Uh, and a big discourse space, not one with one object, uh, with the single telos, but a space where we talk about, the, uh, about those big uh, uh, kind of issues. And I think that, that globalization and the problems that globalization, neoliberal globalization, brings both with the, whatever the problems were with that presentation yesterday, it, it carried something very, very powerful in terms of the bottom big, the unbelievable misery of the poorest people in the world. And, and pretty profound misery not very far away from first world countries. It's part of globalization is bringing the third and sometimes even almost the fourth world into the first world. Uh, so you have problems in that scope and then other things uh, and not just pushing my own issue that I'm concerned with, but the, the incredible threat to 